Hello guys, it's Icelar for me, and if you don't know, I'm a big Kirby fan, so it's a big deal that Kirby's Dream Collection is coming out next month. And to celebrate, I want to review the Kirby games that have already come out on the Nintendo DS and Wii systems. Today, I'll be reviewing one of my most favorite Kirby games, Canvas Curse. Known for its innovative touch controls, it's arguably the best Kirby spinoff to date. Who's causing trouble in Dreamland this time, you ask? A witch, of course. When Kirby notices the world changing colors, he challenges Dracia, but she escapes after turning Kirby into a ball and Dreamland into a painting. As you can expect, the story is basic, but it doesn't matter. It sets up a foundation for a creative game filled with Kirby charm, keeping copy abilities and familiar foes intact. The developers at HAL Laboratory did an excellent job in upgrading the graphics from GBA level. Bows look bold and juicy, and the backgrounds have a unique watercolor texture to them, but menus looked out of place, featuring recycled art, and some environments looked plain. Still, this is a great looking game. The heavily electronic soundtrack features mostly remix classics, but the tracks are chipper and, as always, catchy. Kirby has lost the power to float and suck up enemies. Heck, he can't even walk. He has to roll his way to the finish, but the path he follows is directed by you. Using the stylus, you can draw rainbow strokes he can write across. As a sphere, Kirby is constantly moving, so it's your responsibility he doesn't fall into hazards. These mechanics might seem restrictive, but each level is specially designed for Kirby to navigate through them and clearing obstacles has been simplified to the slightest touch. It's cool to see how the lines you make have such an effect on gameplay. Kirby needs your assistance constantly, requiring proactive behavior because you might just miss that bronze coin or that line you traced wasn't long enough. Canvas Curse isn't perfect though. The bosses are entertaining, but there's only three, and they're reused until the last boss. Controlling Kirby in strong forces like water and fierce winds can be a pain, but if you're striving for a challenge, it won't bother you. You have a stronger sense of risk than in previous Kirby games, but when you reach the finish, it feels more rewarding than any Kirby game that came before it. Canvas Curse will keep you busy too, with 8 worlds filled with medals to find, more challenges in the Rainbow Run mode, and the option to play as other characters. For such an early game in the Nintendo DS's life, Canvas Curse is amazing. It's interesting to think I would have never experienced Kirby in this form if Nintendo didn't have the guts to create a dual screen portable. I'm so glad they did. Canvas Curse will wow you with its new take on platforming, keep you busy with its challenges, while staying true to the Kirby theme. This is an original, exclusive title that must be played if you own a DS or even a 3DS. This is why the touchscreen was implemented in Nintendo's handheld. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Subscribe for more reviews, especially if you want Kirby reviews because I'm going on a Kirby review blowout. My next review will be on Kirby's Squeak Squad, so you can look forward to that. If you want a more detailed look at this game, you can check out my full written review where it has my full details and thoughts of the game, that some of which I didn't mention in this video. Uh, comment below if you have played this game, or if you haven't, are you interested in it now? I would like to know. And until my next video, see ya!